My name is Cornelius Crowley. I live in London. I was born in 1959. I was born in Harrisville Hospital. Um, my mother was not well, so I was born there because there was some risk of my birth. I was born by caesarean and uh, immediately had a blood transfusion and was then transferred to an ICU, that's an intensive care unit. And I was in an incubator for six weeks and then I was brought back to Ireland to where my family lived and I grew up in Ireland. I am a survivor. Um, I'm a survivor of Irish Catholic boarding schools uh, during the 60s and 70s. My first school was a convent called Kilishi where I went um, at about the age of five, five and a half, and uh, spent the next 11 years in Irish Catholic boarding schools. And uh, much of my time at home too was pretty dysfunctional. Um, I was abused lots. I was beaten, humiliated, chastised, terrorised, psychologically tortured, um, sexually assaulted on a number of occasions. And uh, it was pretty horrific, really. Now, the interesting thing is that I grew up with all this. And it wasn't until I was 28 that I realised that there was something wrong with the way I grew up that there was something wrong with the way the adults treated me. Up to that point, I pretty much thought it was all me, it was all my fault, that there was something wrong with me, per se. And uh, the reason I became aware of that at the age of 28 was because I came across a book called Adult Children of Alcoholics, which talked about the cycles of abuse that pass from generation to generation. Uh, I've written about my experiences as a child and since 28 I've spent pretty much all my time focused on recovering from the years of trauma and abuse that I endured and I have spent a lot of time examining what it is to be an actual human being. I've been a parent and I learned through my own children how to relate empathetically to children as children really need. And initially I started off being a bit of a bully. Quite a bully actually. I slapped them and I hit them and I shouted at them and I made them do things they didn't want to do. And I was coercive. And then one day came along and I just couldn't hack it any longer. It was too much. I couldn't possibly continue with what I was doing. I couldn't look at my children and see that fear and terror and pain in their eyes. And so I went off and I got some help. Now I didn't go to social services and I didn't go to a psychologist. I went and I found <coughs> a self-help group um, called Parent Link or Parent Line. I'm not sure of the details, but the basic setup was there was one adult, one parent or one person who had, the basic setup was there was one person who had had some experience of natural parenting, empathetic parenting. And then there was 13 of us that worked together as parents seeking to learn this way of parenting. And there was 13 of us, and I was the only man. All the others uh, were women, obviously. And most of them, if not all of them, were married. And I was the only partner taking part in the course uh, because the other partners either weren't interested or they were doing the babysitting or for whatever reason they didn't seem to be getting involved. So I sat down with these women and over a course of 13 weeks we explored what a natural child really is and what children are expecting and what are the limitations of children in terms of their communication and their sensitivity and their energy. And we learned things, very simple things that helped me, at least, to address my behaviour towards my own children fairly rapidly. A very simple thing, for example. Most of us have little re recollection of how we were treated in our first four to five years of, of life. Our memories of those times are dim for an awful lot of people. There'd be one or 
to you can pick up a detail it isn't there but what happens is that's when we got our first information about how to treat a child because we took that information from how we were treated we're brand new to this planet brand new to life and this is the treatment we get and we automatically assume at that time well that's the normal way to do things and so when it came to having my own children in spite of saying I would never do all the things that was done to me, I behaved like a bully towards them. I was domineering, I was controlling, I was authoritarian. And I didn't understand them. Um, I wasn't empathetically connecting to them the way they needed me to connect. And so I learned that my past was interfering with their present. Learning this helped me greatly to <clears throat> spot when my behavior was coming from the past and interfering with their present and to devise interrupts, ways of interrupting my behavior so I could stop, hang on a second, what's happening? This is not their present, this is my past. Sit down with the children, get with their present, work through whatever it is I wanted them to do or we were trying to get done and then get on with it at their level, at their pace. And in time, that would give me the space to reflect back on when I was their age, what it had been like for me. And uh, while I was able to stop my behavior in the present towards my children fairly rapidly, it has taken me a long, long time to address the issues within myself, the pain, the wounding, the trauma, the learned behaviors, the fear, the shame, all of that. So as a survivor, it was interesting to me that I could still be an empathic parent, <clears throat> you know, supportive of my children, and still be wounded, and still carry on the pathway of working through my woundedness. You know, some of the things that happened to me in boarding school were pretty horrific, and I don't see the need to go into them here, um, save to say they absolutely had a profound and negative um, distressing effect on my life uh, for a long time. And the survivors are not being listened to in this world today. We are not being heard. Wherever survivors speak up, there's always some kind of attempt to suppress or control or corral the expression of survivors. And it's incredibly important for me in my past anyway that I was able to find people with whom I could speak the truth. And that truth sometimes was painful. It involved tears, it involved shouting, it involved anger, rage, frustration, depths of depression. And it can be uncomfortable for another person to watch another person go through that. Nonetheless, that's what needs to happen. Society as a whole needs to hear all the survivors speak and needs to hear their stories and needs to witness because that's one of the steps in healing. And it can't be sidestepped. There is no magic fix. There is no chemical that will sidestep the need for that work. This is something we all must engage with in equally. So that's pretty much where I'm at with all of this. Uh, I've spent many years researching what I call the natural child and I'm currently working on a book called Natural Child, Natural Society and the basic pitch of it is as follows. If you don't damage the natural empathic child you don't end up with adults who are empathically damaged and who will repeat the cycles. It really is that simple. It's about addressing the fact that we are innately intrinsically, biologically mandated to be empathic. The baby coming out of the womb is expecting to meet empathic adults who know what they're doing, who live in a balanced way as part of the earth, as part of the nature, as part of the habitat. That's what the baby from the womb is expecting because if you think about it, inside the womb that's what they are living. They're living completely connected to their mother, empathetically connected, they are growing inside the womb, that is their world. All their nourishment needs are being met. They are learning as they grow in the womb, 
we now know that the consciousness of babies is much greater than had been uh, assumed before. And we know that the birth experience and infancy is a continuous experiential learning. It's a process where the empathy that they had and felt and experienced as um, in the womb as part of the mother and the mother as part of themselves, that empathetic learning has to continue once they are outside the womb as a separate person. And there are certain biological cues that have to be in place to enable that empathic learning to happen. And we know from much science, from perinatal studies, postnatal studies, from neuroscience, from biochemistry, from developmental science, that if those cues are missing, then the child will not learn empathy as needed. And that there is a direct link between the disruption of the child-mother bonding processes as mandated by nature and the emergence of violence and hierarchy and abuse within society. So my message is twofold, is that if we want to see an end to abuse, we have to address the survivors of abuse and give them the space to tell the truth of their stories and we must listen to it and accept that truth and face it and that will help them recover. And then we must look at the practices within our society that disrupt the natural, empathic, man biologically mandated processes. And those twofold steps are very, very important. I'll tell you this about survivors. We're angry, some of us. We're hurting, many of us. But I have never met a survivor on the work of recovery who wishes to harm anyone not even those who abuse them. What we want and what we require and what we need is understanding justice. And justice means restorative justice. It's not a question of compensation. It's, a question, it's not a question of reparation. It's a question of moving forwards in a society that absolutely makes it impossible for abuse to occur on the scale that it has occurred thus far. And so this is my statement as a survivor to tell you where I am, where I'm going and where I want society as a whole to go with us survivors as we bring our stories. Because the wisdom that we bring to you as a society is missing from the political debates, from the religious debates, from the psychological debates, from the mass media, from our schools and from our relationships. And it's time that this omission was corrected. Thank you for taking the time to listen to me.